And then secondly, we've got to be faithful in carrying out our God-given tasks. Now, there's a lot of different tasks that God gives to each one of us, and some of them are different. Uh, some of my tasks have been straightening chairs. I've straightened out more chairs than you can imagine. <laughs> Cleaning toilets for the king. You say, Pastor, are you complaining? Oh, absolutely not. I'm, I'm privileged to be able to do that. Hello? Amen. And, and your task may be being faithful on your job. Your task may be prayer. It may be singing. It may be teaching. It may be encouraging others. It may just be being faithful to your family. But do you realize that God has made you a ruler over at least a part of his kingdom, a part of his house? That's what it says, right? Let me go back to this for a moment. Who then is a faithful and wise servant whom his master made ruler over his household to give them food in due season? Now, I, I have been given the privilege of being the shepherd here, the under-shepherd at Fountain of Life. And, and when I say that, it puts a little bit of fear in me because I know that I'm going to have to give an account for what I do as pastor of Fountain of Life to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Am I right? Amen. And you're going to have to give an account for your life. And, and, and uh, I've got to take very seriously my role here. In particular, my role as the proclaimer of the Word of God. I want to rightly divide the Word and teach the entire Bible. Thank you so much. Amen. The Scripture says, Whom his master made ruler over his household... And it goes on to say to give them food in due season. Now, Mother's Day, we had a big feast here. So I'm good, right? That's not what it's talking about. Come on. This isn't talking about bacon and eggs and chocolate chip pancakes. No, sir. This is talking about the food of the Word of God. Amen. This is talking about milk for spiritual babies. This is talking about meat for the mature. This is talking about giving you Jesus Christ, who he declared, I am the bread of life. Come on. And as a pastor, I'm responsible to preach the whole Bible, right? Not just the parts that are popular. I have to preach the parts that our society deems imp uh, to be politically incorrect. But I've got to make sure people are getting fed this word. Can we just give a big hand, not for me, but for every minister of the gospel who di rightly divides the word of God. Come on, give, give the Lord a hand of praise. But I want you to remember something else here. The church is a household. We know that. The scripture calls it that. But guess what? So is the place where you live. A household. If you're a man in particular, you've got a powerful responsibility if you're in a marriage. Come on. You're sure to be the spiritual leader of your home. What? Yes, sir. Absolutely. That's what the Word says. Jesus isn't playing here. And I want every dad to hear me. We are responsible to make certain that our family is fed meat in due season, right? To get the Word of God. And I think that what's happened in our world today that is that many believers are slack in giving their children what they need spiritually. Boy, it's quiet in here. They never miss dance lessons or karate or piano, soccer, basketball, baseball, other extracurricular activities. But what's interesting to me is how that church somehow becomes an optional thing. Let me tell you, when I grew up, church was not an optional thing. I could not imagine myself at about 14 telling my father, I don't think I'm going to go to church today. Uh-uh. My mother, too. Come on. Amen. We're all responsible. Amen. We've got to bring our families to the house of God. We've got to make that a priority because, let me tell you, that's the worst thing you can do for your kids is make Jesus kind of a, a halftime deal. Right? Uh, you know, it's, it's you know, you know it, just part-time Jesus. That's all we really need. Optional Jesus. A 911 Jesus. When you're in trouble, call on Jesus. Let me tell you something. That's not the kind of Jesus I serve. Come on, and you serve. You and I, we serve the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. He's God all the time. He's Lord every single day. And He deserves to have people honor Him and, and 
teach their children the Word of God. And we ought to be doing that at home, talking about it when we get up, when we, when we, when we, uh, at the dinner table. Amen. We ought to be, why? You know why? Because Jesus is coming. Amen. Did you know you can even go to a movie and after the movie is done, you can break it down. How many of you ever broke down a movie, right? You just say, this was what the devil tried to teach you in that movie. Or this is a moral truth that God's trying to show you there. You know, a movie is art and art speaks about life. And God has a lot to say about life. Come on, somebody. It's all a matter of mindset. we got to teach our kids every single moment that we get. Come on. Amen. You can point out those satanic lies. And what God is looking for, my friend, is faithfulness. Faithful servant. A faithful. Let me tell you something. When I stand before Jesus, the one thing I want him to say to me is, well done, good and faithful servant. Come on, somebody. I want to tell, have him say, you know what? You've been faithful to get into the Word. You were faithful in prayer. You were faithful to teach and preach. Come on. You were faithful to do what you could do. Amen. Now, if you imagine if you hired someone to do a job for you and they were only faithful three out of five days, how long would they last? They wouldn't last long, right? And, you know, but people say, well, you know, we can't, I'm, we're only human, we can't help it. Listen, listen today. God wants for people to be consistent servants, faithful. I'll tell you something. I believe that we ought to do our best for Jesus. Amen? Amen. There should be no such thing as a poorly run ministry. We ought to do it with the, all the excellence that we have and all the excellence that we can. Come on. Somebody give Jesus a big hand of praise today. But you know, there's one thing that people say, a complaint that's heard, and this is what they say. I just don't have any time. I don't have time to pray or read the Bible. I don't have time to, you know, I don't have time to serve. And that's their solid excuse for not doing what God wants them to do. But you know, Psalms 31 and verse 15 tells us this. He says, my times are in your hand. Our times are in God's hand. And if God has a plan for each of us, right, then he must have allotted all the time that's necessary for each one of us to be able to fulfill all that he expects of each one of us in our, in our life according to his plan. Let me tell you something. God is like an employer who tells his works, workers, here's the work you are to do and here's all the sufficient resources that you will need to do it. And what happens is we see this in the life of Jesus. You never see Jesus stressed out running around oh no running behind incapable of completing his task absolutely not how incredible that within the three years of ministry he had he fulfilled everything that God wanted him to do come on he preached the kingdom of God he trained 12 disciples and he made an atonement for sin by giving his life as a death a life on the cross and the gospels show us that Christ was always concerned about doing the right thing at the right time amen so we have to tell ourselves there's always going to be enough time to get it done amen now, let me tell you you can serve the Lord it's just a matter of priority it's a matter of putting him first how many of you are glad I'm going to preach about the wise and faithful servant eh? if I don't preach this if I don't teach this to people that you've got to be faithful to the Lord, you'll stand before the, you'll come uh, coming into heaven and they'll say, well, he won't say, welcome, good and faithful servant. He'll say, welcome, you barely made it in by the skin of your teeth. What? My, my pastor didn't tell me any of this. Huh? You can't say that because I did. Amen. Okay. 